Yeah, I know, it's not that kind of bomb, but I'm just not one to resist a cheap sound effect. And besides, it does say bomb on the side. I'm gonna get to that in a moment. What do we have here? This is a self-contained, self-powered, wireless, wing-mounted AHARS, except really, it's an ATAHARS. I'll get to that too. Recall a year ago, I reported during our Sun and Fun coverage about the prototype of this device. It's made by Level Aviation. You know Level, they make a line of small portable and glare shield mounted AHARS and ADSB units, and they've been around for a number of years. And this one is called the BOM, and BOM is an acronym, it means Broadcasting Outer Module. Yeah, I know it's a little bit of a reach to make the acronym work, but you get the picture. So what's in here, it is a solid state, AHARS unit, but it has air data, so it's really an ATAHARS, which is Air Data Attitude Heading Reference System. You have to look close, but there's a tiny little pedo here up at the front. The self-powered comes from this turbine, and well, that will also charge an internal battery. And the ADSB in part is this little whip antenna here. Now, future versions of this are going to have an internal ADSB antenna. I think that's a good idea because in working around the airplane a couple of times, I've bumped this thing and I was worried about breaking it off. So it'd be much better if it's included internally. Okay, how about installation approvals? Well, they're done under the FAA's so-called NORSI letter. That's for non-required safety enhancing equipment. In case you're not up on FAA speak, I like to call it the y'all be careful letter because it really doesn't have a lot of requirements. It only says if you install something like this, make sure it doesn't compromise the basic safety of the airplane. In the cub, I made up an aluminum bracket and then I used some hose clamps to clamp it to a jury strut. Now, level says the bomb should be level this way. So in order to do that, you can just eyeball it against the uh, to make it parallel to the cord line, and then you can adjust the pitch of the bomb this way. Or if you want, you could get out a level and a bevel gauge. I actually did that uh, for the first installation. Level likes you to do a pull test on this. It's only got a couple of pounds of drag, but they want you to pull test it to 4.8 pounds. So I used a fish scale, and I stopped pulling at 10 pounds, so I really don't think this thing's gonna go anywhere. It's been tested out to 210 knots on other airplanes, so it seems to be a pretty solid installation. And you know what? It really works great, but come on, give me a break. Let's put it on something serious and a little bit faster, like my friend Dangle Landry's nice V35. If anything, the installation is a little bit easier on this airplane because this airplane has removable tie-down rings. They're held in with four number 10 screws into the spar cap. I backed those out, made up a little bracket, screwed it in place. Looks good. The only thing we had to do was adjust the level, but you can eyeball that and then fine tune it in the app. So let's go spin this thing up at 150 knots. One thing I did not mention is that the bomb doesn't have an on-off switch, so how do you turn it on and off? Well, you do that automatically. It has a vibration sensor in the device, so as soon as the airplane starts up and it gets a little shake, it fires up. For one of our takeoffs, all that happened just before the camera departed the wing. Uh, too bad, that was my favorite camera. And it has an uh, internal battery uh, that's supposed to be good for about two hours of operation if the turbine's not spinning or not available. So if you're on the ground and you give it a shake, it'll turn on. And then what happens is it begins to transmit the wireless signal, and then you just go to your device. In this case, uh, we're using an iPad, and it will appear as one of the networks and uh, you just connect to that network and you're good to go. Then the device starts transmitting both the AHARS data, basic attitude, airspeed, and all the rest of it, and the ADSB data, and you'll soon begin to see traffic, you can get the weather, and so forth. So what you're looking at here is the uh, level uh, utility, the AHARS utility, and all it does is display AHARS data directly from the device itself. So on the left side you've got instruments, uh, they're analog instruments, you've got airspeed, 
uh, altimeter and down at the bottom uh, angle of attack. I'll get to that in a minute. In the center part of the display, you have an attitude indicator. And uh, in this case, it's a heading with a turn and bank included. Over on the right is a sidebar. And what this shows is raw data coming from the device itself. It shows the battery condition and uh, just whatever data it's reporting. Now you can configure this if you go to uh, the options page. You can uh, change the air data source. You can use pressure, both, or GPS. If you use both, then you, the analog data shows the pressure and the digital uh, shows the GPS. Now you can adjust the uh, barrow. Uh, you can change uh, speed units from knots to kilometers or miles per hour, whatever you want. Now, most of the popular apps will work with this. If they don't work with it now, they will eventually. I'm using the uh, a harsh utility from iLevel and also Wing X Pro, but Level tells us uh, eventually it will work with ForeFlight. And again, all you have to do is connect to the wireless network, and it should display on whatever a harsh utility or, or whatever kind of ADSB utility those apps happen to have. And what we're looking at here is uh, Wing X Pro. And on the left side, we've got the AHARS data. And the speed data is shown on the top. It's got uh, speed, the cross stack information, and uh, altitude. That, that's all digital data from the bomb. And on the right side display, you can see some of the uh, ADSB traffic in the area. We've got some uh, high altitude traffic, but actually, there are quite a few low altitude targets around. You can tell by it displays altitude and also the speed. Typically the ADS-B in units will show high altitude traffic on the ground, so you'll see uh, airliners uh, cruising up in the flight level. And once you take off, it will begin to see the nearby low altitude targets. Now the bomb and the level AHARS utility has an angle of attack indicator. It's worth explaining a little bit about how this works. Angle of attack indicators are two types. But the vane type, which has a vane which measures angle of attack directly to the relative uh, wind, and the pressure sensing devices, which uh, calculate it, they imply it from uh, uh, pressure changes. So this is a pressure type angle of attack indicator. Now there's a slight problem with this because of where the bomb is located. It's located in a high pressure area under the wing. Now normally, an airspeed system would have a static system that senses static pressure and it compares it to the pressure, pitot pressure, and that's how it calculates airspeed. Well, the bomb is in this constant high pressure area and it doesn't have a static source. So this is kind of worked out in the software, and you have to go through a calibration process to get the angle of attack indicator to work. And the way Level recommends doing that is to multiply your stall speed, clean stall speed, times 1.15. So in the Bonanza here, that comes out to 62 knots. So what you do is plug that into the software, into the app, and then when you get to that speed, you slow the airplane up to 62 knots and then press calibrate or set and that tells the angle of attack application within the app what speed you're at so it can display the angle of attack. Now the angle of attack is not really degrees, it's sort of a relative lift reserve indicator and as you can see, the gauge is calibrated green, yellow, and red. And the red, you're getting close to what it sees as the stall angle of attack. So you can see that the bomb outputs pretty good data. It's accurate on the uh, AHAR side. And as far as we can tell, it's comparable to the panel mount here on the ADS-B end. Gives you weather, traffic, and all the stuff you want. So what's it good for? Well, Level is pitching the thing as a backup, so you strap it to the airplane, and in case your panel mount power or any of the instruments fail, you've got a constant backup, and it'll play on a tablet or a smartphone or what have you. But my thinking is that it's actually a better, super convenient AHARS ADS-B portable. 
I've never much liked the portable uh, ADS-B units that you have to put on the glare shield. You've got a lot of wires and power and all the rest of it. With this, it's just hanging out there on the wing. When you take off, it starts itself up automatically and generates power on its own. So I think it would be a good application for an older airplane like, say, an uh, older Cherokee or maybe a, a, a Cessna 170 or an older 172, something like that, where you want the ADS-B capability and the AHARS capability, but you don't want a, the bother of a glare shield mounted uh, device. Couple things. It has been tested in the rain. Now, I've seen this unit apart. It has a sophisticated series of O-rings and grooves to seal it against moisture, so I don't think rain will be a problem. It has not been tested in ice. It does have, after a fashion, pedo heat. The nose piece of the bomb is heated with about five watts of power from the generator. Now, we really don't know how that's going to perform in ice. I suspect we'll hear about it after the first winter. I imagine that in heavy ice, it will ice over and probably the turbine wheel will ice and maybe stop working, but we'll find out. You can find out more about the bomb itself on Level's website at level.com. That's L-E-V-I-L.com. And in the June 2018 issue of Aviation Consumer, find a full report on the bomb. I'm Paul Bertarelli reporting. Thanks for watching. Notice we have our shoulder harnesses on. That's because people on YouTube lose their shit when you don't have your shoulder harnesses on.